Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. How to make a mini cleaver that's etched with a 3D design. Now these little hand-sized cleavers um, are, are kind of cool. They come in a variety of different uh, styles and you can finish them any way you'd like. Uh, you can do a straight bevel, you can do a, um, a bevel just with an uh, angle grinder, you put wood scales on it. In this case I use brass scales. And cleavers happen to be perfect uh, for doing etching because they have a decent amount of surface space. These are the four different designs uh, that are available. Uh, they're on our website, DIYEasyCrafts.com, and they're relatively easy to make um, compared to other knife styles. You're going to start this process. I just use a black magic marker, and I, I mark the edge. And what I'm doing is I'm going to scribe a line to find the center. And I just do it this way. I hold my finger in the same spot and I scribe a line from both sides and that leaves two scribed lines, uh, the center of which is the center of the knife. And I'm going to use that as a visual reference uh, when I'm grinding the bevels. Now as I mentioned before, these little mini cleavers are really easy. You don't need a belt sander, uh, but if you have one you certainly could use it. So in this case, I'm just demonstrating how you could um, finish this type of a mini cleaver with a belt sander with a nice straight bevel. Cleavers don't usually have a uh, plunge cut, but you can use a uh, bevel jig, end up with a nice straight line, nice straight bevel. And for those of us that don't have a belt sander, these little mini cleavers are also perfect because we can accomplish a, a very, very nice finished product just by using an angle grinder. So that's one of the mini cleavers with a straight bevel. And here I'm going to finish off another one uh, just with an angle grinder. I'm just using a, a flap sanding wheel with a uh, 80 grit paper. Um, again, I've marked that that center mark or the center line of the thickness and I'm just going to do a visual reference on that uh, as I'm grinding. You do want to keep these things cool. You want to dip them in water every once in a while, every few passes. Uh, and because of these middle, some of these middle mini cleavers have a um, kind of a pointy tip to them, you want to keep that tip a little bit thicker uh, than the rest of the material. Uh, you'll finish grinding that after the heat treating. You just don't want it to get too hot. Uh, you'll end up losing that tip. Um, if you are going to finish it with an um, angle grinder and flap sanding wheel, uh, you're going to want to sand it off afterwards. I think I sanded it down to about a 220. I started with an 80 and then just went to a 220. These are small knives, so there's not a lot of work to be done on them. The sanding doesn't take all that long. The other neat thing about each one of these designs is you can personalize them. Um, in this case, I'm going to just um, mark a little bit of a, of a curve that I'm going to add to the forward edge of the blade and also another curve onto the spine. And I'll just you know, grind these down with the, uh, with the angle grinder or, or the belt sander. So on this particular project, I'm really just playing around with a couple of different ideas, a couple of different techniques. And I decided to do it on one of these little um, mini cleavers before I did it on a, on a full size knife. So I'm gonna do some metal etching. I've done this numerous times on other blades. I cut out the vinyl stencil on a, a vinyl cutting machine, a craft cutting machine called a Silhouette Cameo. But you could cut out any design by hand on self-adhesive vinyl. You pick this up at an arts and crafts store. I transferred it onto a clear transfer film and that just allows me to to place it accurately on the blade. I cleaned the blade with alcohol and then I also taped off uh, the surrounding area so I didn't etch anything that I didn't want to etch. The whole principle behind this electro etching is that you're going to hook up a car battery charger, a 12 volt battery charger. You hook up the positive end to the blade 
and the negative end you wrap a little bit of gauze um, and then you dunk that in some salt water. Um, I usually dab it off so it's really just moist, it's not soaking wet. And then you apply it to the stencil. And basically any area that's exposed is going to get etched. Now what I'm playing with here is a two-tone etching. This is a um, kind of a hole or, or a crack design and I want to give it a 3D effect and in order to do so a portion of that design is going to be etched not as deep as the rest of the design. So basically I'm doing this etching prior to heat treating. I'm going to etch each area of that uh, stencil for about 60 seconds, you know, 10 to 20 seconds at a time in each spot so that the vinyl doesn't heat up too much and, and lose any of its stickiness. And then the area that is going to be two-tone is that going to, is that's not going to be etched as deep. I'm going to remove the vinyl from that about halfway through and then continue to etch everything again. So basically the vinyl that I'm removing now is the portion of the design that's going to be a, hopefully a little bit lighter in tone. Now because you know most people etch after heat treating, um, I really wanted to do it before heat treating. I just find it gives kind of a darker end result. Um, but in doing so, you have to do a deep etch. Uh, after heat treating, um, this blade is going to get sanded off or uh, polished with a, probably a 400 grit emery paper. And then after it's tempered in the oven, it's also again going to be uh, sanded off with a 400 grit emery. Uh, so if this was a very light etching, I'd actually end up sanding off that etch. Um, so this has to be a, a pretty deep etching. I found that about a minute in each spot really provides uh, you know good depth to the etch. Once I'm finished with the etching I can turn off the battery charger and remove uh, that final stencil. You do have to polish it off a little bit with some fine emery just to see what kind of result you get. polish and that's that's basically the result that I was looking for nice deep etch kind of a 3d design so I'm, I brought this over to my friend's shop for heat treating um, he heat treats just with a with a set of torches he brings the knife or the blade of the knife uh, up until it's cherry red no longer magnetic and then quenches it in oil After the heat treating, uh, the knife is completely black, uh, but you can still see the etching underneath. So I polished this off. Um, I think I did a four or an 800 grit emery, uh, polished it all off, and then I'm gonna continue with the project. Um, before I added the scales, I did temper it. I put it in a kitchen oven, 375 degrees for three hours, and then I let it cool inside the oven without opening the door. Um, I decided to play around with some brass scales for this particular knife. Um, I just pinned them as usual, um, quarter inch pins, I drilled holes through um, both sc scales, clamped them together. I do a lot of the um, rough um, shape work with that same angle grinder and flap sanding wheel. I just find it removes a lot of material very quickly. Um, you can finish off some of the edges with a, a Dremel grinder. These little drum sanding wheels work uh, really nicely. These scales have not yet been permanently placed uh, onto the knife. It's just a, a rough fitting at this point. I wanted to try a hammer peened brass look. 
Um, so you know, basically, I just beat up one side of each one of these scales with a ball peen hammer. And that ball peen hammer will actually stretch out the brass a little bit. It will close in some of those holes, or the two holes, so you will have to re-drill those to clean them up. Um, this, you know, as with the etching, is really just an experiment. And uh, you'll see in a minute, I wasn't really happy with the results. I took these scales and I applied them just like I do uh, wood scales. I apply a two-part epoxy uh, to the uh, blade as well as to both sides of the scales, or I'm sorry, to one side of each scale, and also uh, some to the pins. Then I'm going to put these together, push the pins through, and then once I make sure everything's in place, I'm going to put these in a vise and some additional clamps and, and clamp them overnight until that epoxy is completely dry. And then after that's dry, I'll, comp I'll completely finish forming those scales. So I like the ball peened look. It's just that after I finished um, bringing these scales into the size, uh, the actual finished shape, uh, they just weren't comfortable in my hand. I wanted to round over uh, those scales like I do like I do with wooden scales and make them a little bit more, you know, form fitting into the palm of your hand. I wanted to round over all of the edges. Um, and before I did that, it really just just wasn't comfortable. So I like the ball peen look, but during the process of rounding over all these scales, I kind of ground away uh, a good portion of each side of the scale. Now I did most of the rounding with an um, angle grinder, a disc grinder. Then I sanded them all smooth. I did use a, uh, a Dremel also for some of the edges. Now this is feeling much better in my hand. A little bit of finished sanding. And then because I like the look of that ball peen look, I went back to the Dremel and I used a round bit and I'm just adding little uh, scallop marks or divots into the brass. The, you know, the brass is a nice, soft, malleable uh, material, so the, the Dremel really works nicely with it. That's basically the finished handle. You can leave that, you can polish it, uh, you can tarnish it, you can do almost, there's a lot of things that you can do with brass. Uh, what I did was I just put it on the buffing wheel uh, for a little bit. I wanted to, to kind of have some shiny aspects on the outer edges of each one of those divots, uh, but I wanted the, the center to be kind of dark. And this is really all just personal preference. But that's it, that's the finished product. So it's a 3D etched mini cleaver, fits in the palm of your hand, uh, scalloped brass scales. These uh, blanks, which were all water jet cut, are available on DIYeasycrafts.com. You can finish these things any way you like. They make great EDCs or everyday carries, um, and they make great little neck knives. Please check us out on the web at DIYeasycrafts.com. Be sure to check out our other how-to videos, including our knife making videos. Thank you very much.